hi hello welcome and welcome back so i have a new project that i want to work on so i thought i would take you all along with that um and actually um this new project i've already been working on it for a little bit this past week so it's not necessarily like new new but you know i just wanted to explain what it is anyway in this intro so i'm going to make a sweater and this type of sweater that i want to make is going to be based off of a template so i do this thing a lot where if i make something i kind of like base it off of something that i already have because it just makes my life easier so i thrifted this cable knit sweater a while ago and i super love the fit of it it's this green one i think you've seen it before if you have watched or and remember some of my old videos because i used it for like styling and stuff but it's basically this drop shoulder sweater and the sort of like different thing that i want to do with this design is i usually make really wide sleeves like balloon sleeves because i do quite like them and i think they're super cute but i want to try making this type of sleeve which is called a tapered sleeve so as you can see i think it's called a tapered sleeve at least um so as you can see it's like wider on the top and then as it goes to the cuff it like narrows itself so it doesn't narrow itself like um suddenly to create that like poofy balloon type of sleeve it just like is a gradual kind of like narrowing i don't know what the word for that is but you get what i mean and let's talk about the yarn that i'm gonna be using okay i'm so excited to share with you all this yarn it's so pretty isn't it it's from pokomi they make such beautiful yarns i got this one a while ago um when pokomi didn't ship overseas yet and i'm really thankful for Haley because she was able to ship them she basically bought them on behalf of me and then like shipped it for me and then i just like paid her back but um i'm really thankful that she offered to ship these over to me and it's so beautiful the color reminds me of like wisterias because it's like this muted like green and purple and there's like some whites in there too and i just am so in love with this yarn like literally look at it I have a few designs for this particular sweater. I kind of want to make one with like some kind of star motif. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just continue working on the back panel. So I worked on the back panel for a little bit and actually surprisingly, this part didn't take me too long to finish. I kind of expected it to take a bit longer because I was using a um, smaller hook and sport weight yarn but again surprisingly it did not take me that long and then afterwards i just quickly measured it against my body to make sure that the fit was around what i'm going for and it looked good so i basically just continued on with marking out everything before starting on the front panel okay so i want to update you all about my progress and basically what happened is i didn't film at all yesterday but i did get a lot of work done or was it the past two days i can't really remember but you know double crochet works out pretty fast as you can see even though there are like a bunch of stitches like in a bunch of rows because i'm making this oversized and like longer on me so yeah i have this and what you want to do when you're making a, like a, putting a graph gram on something is i like making the back panel first actually and then I mark out where I want like the neckline to be. So mine is gonna be right here. And then where I want the graphics to be. So my graphic, I made like a pretty big one. And basically it's gonna reach from up here to all the way down here, kind of like in a rectangle. But the graphic itself, it's not a rectangle, it's a star. But you know, you kind of get the idea. So the star would be kind of like, like, that if you can visualize it one worry that i do have is the fact that over here is where like i have some of my yarn but i only have these two um balls left or these two cakes left and i'm currently using the other cakes to do in tarsia for my front panel which i will show you all later so i don't think i'm gonna have enough yarn which is really sad because i thought like when i bought this i thought 800 grams would be perfect for like an oversized sweater but obviously if i'm making it very oversized i probably should have bought like uh one kilogram or like even more than that so 
that's my own fault and this color pokemi probably doesn't have any more since it's been a year so i'm just gonna probably have to make some parts of the sleeve in like white or something like that but yeah that's my progress so far okay so i'll show you all how to make a graph gram otherwise known as pixel crochet or like pixel charts so i use this website called stitchviddle.com and once you go to that website you'll have like something that looks like this you'll click on crochet and you can click on crochet with colors and right here you can actually search up the type of yarn that you use and it's pretty useful because they have all the colors loaded in for you with the color codes and everything and you can click on empty chart and just literally directly fill in each pixel into stitch fiddle however i think this is a lot harder and what's easier for me is just choosing a picture from something that i drew so i just drew like a star on procreate and i'm just going to upload that and so i'm going to choose this picture and as you can see it loads into something that looks like this now something that's super important is you need to make sure that the gauge that you're using is uploaded into this chart so under stitch count you'll click on size calculator and for me i made a four by four inch gauge so if you made like a two by two inch gauge you can change it to two by two but I did four by four so i'm going to leave it as is and using double crochets i got 19 stitches by 10 rows and you can click apply and as you can see the stitches are like more rectangular and it's a lot easier to see when you actually save the chart but for now we're just going to focus on like making sure that the chart will actually fit on the sweater or like the tapestry size that we want so Right here, the width tells you how many stitches there are in this chart, and the height tells you how many rows there are in each chart. So for example, let's say I want to make a tapestry, and I want it to be 30 stitches in width. It looks super weird right here, the star is super cut off, but that's okay, because you're going to change the height. So for example, maybe the height's going to be like 40, or even smaller perhaps, like 20. As you can see, the star is loaded in like this. It looks pretty funky right now. So maybe you want to consider changing the width to something that's slightly bigger. So for example, 40 and then changing the height to like 30. Yeah, so this looks good and I like it and um, I can always edit it a little bit later, but this works for me. Um, I'm going to change the colors to two because that's how many colors I'm using. So then I'm going to click save chart and it uploads into something that looks like this. Now I'm not entirely happy with how it looks like, so I'm going to edit it a little bit by deleting some parts of this and like kind of like making it into what I want it to look. You can also make it like shorter or longer if you want. Well, whatever suits your fancy, you can change it up a little bit here and there. And then once you're happy with how it looks, you can delete some parts. So you press hold if you're using it on the iPad. On your PC or laptop, you would just right click. But basically I'm going to delete these columns. All right, and once you have that, you have your little star. What's um, really helpful for me is you wanna make sure that the direction you're crocheting in is correct to how you're making it. So for example, if you're making it top down, you'll want to change the numbers starting from one from the top instead of like 24 right here. And if you're crocheting, if you're like a lefty and you're crocheting from left to right, you'll want to switch this number one that's on the right to the other side. And how you'll do that is you can just press and hold on this little Google looking thingy, the little location tracker and click on direction. And right here, as you can see, you can just change your settings right here since I'm reading mine from bottom up and then right to left, I can just keep this the same. And then this little location tracker thingy is pretty useful. So for example, if you were just looking at it, normally it looks like this. However, you, if you click on the location tracker, it keeps track on what row you're on. Something else that's also helpful when you're reading the chart is wherever the number is on one side, that's the side you're going to start on when you're reading in rows. So for example, my number one is on the right, so I'm going to read it from right to left. But if the number two is on 
this left part right here, you're going to read it from left to right and so on. And you'll basically just keep reading it all the way up until you finish this last row that's being read from left to right. Okay, so this is what the current front panel looks like right now. I'm on the wrong side, so as you can see, it has like all these like messy little ends and I ended up like using multiple balls of yarn because I was like, oh, I don't want to waste any yarn like going behind here, especially since I'm running out, so I can't do that. So I just have a bunch of these yarns here as well as the yarn that I'm using for the actual star, which is like this really nice, shiny, um, mercerized cotton and this like off-white color i have i think a few more balls of this so if i do run out of yarn i'll just use this for like the ribbing or the sleeves and i don't really mind like a two-toned sweater even though i was originally supposed to be just like this color plus like this as a star but yeah anyway that's how it's working so far anyway i spent the rest of the day working on the front panel of the sweater i did change the design up a little bit so instead of a solid star I ended up putting a swirl in the very center and you'll see that later on but i ended up getting quite a bit done that day so hello it's been a few days since i last filmed but basically a lot has happened i finished this front panel right here the star so cute and then i seamed the sides and then the shoulders together and i actually finished one sleeve i haven't done the cuff yet but i'm gonna do that later and for this sleeve i put one star on it because i was worried about like running out of this purple and green yarn that i have so yeah i'm very concerned because i only have like less than a 100 gram cake and then like literally barely any from a different cake 150 gram skein of this white yarn and then like one mini tiny ass cake of the same white yarn so i don't actually know if i'm gonna have enough yarn left to like finish this so you already know this but i ran out of yarn and that kind of gave me some complications but you know i solved it i fixed it and you know that's what matters i guess at the end of the day i didn't update for a while because i just didn't have the energy to and um if i'm being real i was pretty depressed during august so i just like didn't really want to spend a lot of energy doing stuff that's that i don't have to do and like filming videos i don't have to do it since it's not my job so i just didn't do it i did actually edit though because i like editing that was that's like fine filming takes more energy for me but i edited a video that i filmed in july and i posted that already and some of y'all probably already have seen it but yeah anyway that's basically what i did in august all i did was i worked on this really slowly i edited one video and I think I posted once <laughs> on Instagram, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, let's just go over what happened while I didn't update y'all. So again, I'm almost done with the sweater. I just have this one part of the cuff left. And literally the only reason why I didn't finish it off is because I was like, hmm, I should probably update everyone because then I'm gonna like disappear and then like suddenly show up with like a finished sweater and that'd be really weird. So yeah, that's why I didn't finish this. But going back to the thing about how I ran out of yarn, I ended up having to frog the sleeve that I already made um, in my last update because I only made one white star on there. But when I was working on the second sleeve, I noticed that I was totally going to run out of yarn if I only made one white star. So I made three white stars, but I still ran out of yarn anyway. So I had to like frog the first sleeve just to like harvest some of the green and purple variegated yarn. So that's what happened. And um, even though I did harvest the yarn and everything and when i while i was redoing the first sleeve i still ran out of yarn so <laughs> what i did and what worked out pretty well in my opinion even though it doesn't look 100 percent the same which is to be expected obviously because i'm not using the same yarn is um i took solid color yarns that are like around the same color as my variegated yarn and i split them into like multiple different plies i think it's like i did like two plies so some of them were like 10 plies so i split that in five and then i basically wound the colors up using my uh yarn winder thingy 
in order to create my own like kind of like variegated yarns it was really time consuming but i think it actually worked out pretty well it blends in like i said not perfectly but well enough so so i'm fine with that yeah so i'm just gonna sit here for a little bit and finish off this cup while having a bit of a conversation with y'all i guess so a one-sided conversation because i'm the only one who's talking but yeah, uh, my life is pretty uneventful. Like there's really not much that happens and I'm actually fine with that because if a lot of stuff were to happen, then that would be pretty freaking tiring for me. So I would prefer to live like a more slower paced life. And even if I wanted like a faster paced lifestyle, for me, like <laughs> I never really want one to be honest, but for me, if I want to like experience it, then I actually prefer living vicariously through other people by like watching YouTube videos of like people going places and like doing stuff and like it's not to say that I don't like going places and doing stuff because like I do enjoy that I don't really have like a lot of fun to do that right now and it's fine you know because like eventually I have plans to like go places but for now you know I enjoy watching people's like vlogs and I enjoy watching like people do things even if it's like super like mundane things like i actually like chill vlogs like i really enjoy watching them in general like i will admit that in the past i was like a bit worried slash like insecure or whatever about the way that i was living my life because it's like pretty i i would say like slow paced and like very uneventful because like people always talk about how it's like oh it's like so horrible if you like don't grow or it's like terrible if like nothing changes but like in my opinion it's okay if like nothing changes as long as you are happy with where you are or like happy with the progress that you're making like for example like i'm not 100 percent happy about where i am but you know i'm like thankful and i'm and i'm happy about the progress that i'm making and i might be like slower uh than other people with like my career or like my instagram account for like crochet or whatever but i think that's okay you know success isn't really defined by like you achieving something in a certain time frame i know it might feel like that because a lot of the times people who are like younger than a certain age who achieve great things at that young age are like just celebrated so much more than like for example like older people who achieve something and they're like after they turn like 30 it's like after you turn 30 everything that you do is just has less weight and i just think that's so freaking dumb like why does it matter it's like you know like the forbes 30 and a 30 thingy i used to like read that stuff and be like holy crap like what am i doing with my life i read it when i was like really young by the way like in high school and like younger than that and i would always be like oh my gosh like if i don't do something like this if i'm not on a sort of list like like them then that means i'm useless and that was such a bad toxic thinking like how many people can be on that freaking list bro not that many people only 30 people like every year or something i don't even know how it works because i didn't actually really look into it but yeah like it's fine like i tell myself this to console myself too because like i get worried that oh my gosh i'm 23 and i haven't achieved anything great yet and like stuff like that but but it's fine because i'm slowly getting to it you know i'm i'm slowly i'm slowly getting to what i want to do i'm slowly figuring out what i want to do because when i graduated college i didn't know what the fuck i wanted to do okay and i didn't figure that out until like a year and a half later and now i'm finally being able to do what i want to do slowly it's gonna take me a while but i didn't i never really expected to like be able to jump into something that i enjoyed doing but yeah, most of these words, like I said, they're just used for myself to console myself because sometimes I'll get like really bogged down or like really, I'll have like this really bad like headspace, like control my, my thinking and stuff for a while. And it's just like so bad for my mental health. Like, but anyway, um, that's a lot of talking. I just like recently have been feeling a lot of things and I just wanted to briefly talk about them because I know that maybe some people feel the same way and for me at least it's really reassuring and it's really consoling when I know that other people out there feel the same way because it makes me feel less isolated and it makes me feel less delusional <laughs> about like what I'm feeling and it also makes me feel more like validated and stuff so I hope you all don't mind me like using this space to talk about these things um once in a while but yeah 
Um, I'm just going to finish up this cup and then I'm going to be finished with my sweater and then I will show you all what it looks like when worn on video. Alright, so it's time for me to talk about everything that I liked and disliked about this project. I like everything about this sweater actually, except for the fact that I ran out of yarn and so I had to like split yarn fibers to make this little part of the sleeve. But everything else, I really love the collar, I love the swirl that I added to the star, so instead of like a plain star, it's now like a swirl star type of thingy. I love the raglan fit, and I really really love the tapered sleeve, like this saved me so much yarn. Obviously it looks different from like my favorite like balloon sleeves, but I like this sh shaping and I, th I like the fit of it too. I think it's quite comfortable, it's quite cute, so it works out and it... Like I said, it saved me a lot of yarn, so like if I were to make like a literal like 10 inch balloon sleeve, like ain't no way I would have been able to finish this. I would have like had to like frog the entire thing and like make it cropped or something because there's, like I said, no way I would have been able to have enough yarn. But yeah, overall, I'm so in love with this. I would still be wearing it now if it wasn't so freaking hot outside. So yeah. As always, if you stuck around and you watched all the way up until this point, I'm super thankful for that. But if you only watched the tiny clip or you watched like one minute of the intro and then like skipped all the way into the reveal, I'm also thankful that you clicked on my video out of all the other ones out there. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.